kind of sparking that second half comeback? I don't like to talk about myself in any sort of way, so I'm not saying it was my decision, but I do think it changed the rhythm. Uh, I do think it um, was a big part of it, for sure. What did you say to the guys at halftime after struggling on both ends of the court in the first half? Uh, honestly, I kind of say the same things at halftime that I say before the game. Um, there's a process that I go through that'll start tonight in preparation for Missouri. Uh, very methodical in how I study and what each assistant does to help me in their part of that. Uh, there's charts that I do for myself that I work on at certain times. Uh, and then there's eventually, at the very end, basically the cliff notes of what I've learned that I present to the team. And uh, it's nothing outrageous. It's some of the things that I've said, some of the things that the staff has reiterated. Um, and I just review those same things. And it's on one of those, um, you know, like a post-it note, but it's like the biggest one you can buy. And um, that goes with me on the road. It's in my hotel room when we travel. It's in my office. And it's the last thing that I do uh, after all of the study. And I just go through those same things. And basically, we call them big rocks. It's the priority of what we think uh, we need to do to win. And obviously, after one half, there's 100 minutes of evidence relative to those priorities. Um, I think we had um, our offensive rebound percentage was 12 at halftime. That's not good, considering we were shooting 23% from the floor. Um, we did not do a good job of protecting the rim on their cutters. They were shooting 52% with most of their baskets occurring in the charge circle, other than when Ford made those three threes. So it just kind of went through those same things. Buzz, you've talked uh, really the last ten, uh, five weeks about uh, so often the resiliency and toughness of this basketball team is through the... Can they even like in that like that surprise you at all ever, or do you just come to expect it? Yeah, I just I just hold them in such high regard, Owen. I, I think what's going on here, I understand that uh, the results have been phenomenal, and and I I get the attention that comes with that. I I, I respect um, it. it um, we were six and five, I think, when Santa Claus came to your house. And um, we won 11 out of our first 13 conference games. So that means uh, since Santa Claus came, we've won 13 out of 15. I think they've been very accepting of the situation that we were in. I think they have responded to the changes that we've made. I think they've been willing to do the work required, not knowing that it would end up being what it has been through 15 games, but they've been willing to do the work required just to maybe have a chance for success. I think the staff uh, has been as good as I've ever been around. And I think the, the cohesiveness, player to player, coach to coach, players to coaches, coaches to players. There's a symmetry that I've never experienced. And I say all of that to say that if all of those things are gonna take place, it, it has to start with the character of who they are as people. I don't, I don't think that you lose to Wofford in a guaranteed game, quad four loss, and you're six and five and then you're a half a game out of first place in this league after Valentine's Day. I, I don't think any of those things happen exclusively because of coaching. It has to start with the character of who they are. And like, I get it. Um, hey, what'd you say at halftime? Mm. I said the same thing I said before the game. And that's because uh, I have such respect and admiration for who our guys are. Do I think that we're going to win every game? I, I hope that we do. But do I think that we're in this position 
exclusively because of our talent? No. Do I think we're in this position exclusively because of our coaching? No. I think we're in this position because of the character of the people involved. I, 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 Did they take that toughness and resiliency to another level in the second half? They just don't flinch. They, they don't blink. Um, I don't think they're perfect, but I think they do a phenomenal job of holding one another accountable when they know that we are not playing to the recipe that we have to play to. And I think they are so aware of what we have to do that when we're not doing that, they're chirping at one another in the right way. And I think so much of what we're doing doesn't show up here. I think this is a byproduct of what's happening prior to tip. Mark was asking what you said at halftime. I'm kind of curious about uh, y'all taking the lead and then Arkansas had it right back. I think it was about 6 0 was about nine and a half minutes to go when you called timeout then. Mm -hmm. And y'all really started to control the game after that. So I was, I kind of wonder what you said then. Well, I, I didn't say much. Um, our, our topic of conversation throughout all of the timeouts uh, was pretty much the same throughout tonight. Um, on, on that timeout, Olin, I thought we had burned a lot of gas to get back to that point. I thought we burned a lot of gas when we were down nine. When eight, when eight hit the shot, we were down 12, right? Yeah. Yep. So now we're down nine. Started like gangbusters with four. I think the zone for sure had an impact. I thought they were out of sorts. And I thought our, we had just burned through a lot of gas. And so I called the timeout because now it was going the other way and we needed to, like, that's enough. Let's, let's reconvene here in a minute. With Wade, you know, he had two points in the first half, missed the two free throws. And you, you mentioned. Oh, he's like, uh, what was he, 91% going yeah. into tonight? Yeah, uh, Travis, we shot 82%. <laughs> I'm superstitious, but we shot 82%. And four missed two. So we should have been 20 out of 22. Andy missed one, and Boots missed one. Yeah. Four he, messed us up. He came out in the second half. a lot of other stuff, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was cooking. Yeah, what, what was that difference when he came out and, and was really on fire? I I, uh, I I know it sounds repetitive, and so I'm not trying to control the narrative whatsoever. You guys write whatever you want, tweet whatever you want, but I think our guys really care, and I think they want to give their best. And I don't think that there's any selfishness in the organization. I think everybody is pulling with the same intent, and everybody's very self-aware of themselves, obviously, but also of what's required of our organization. Like I said, I, this is my 29th year in coaching and my 16th year as a head coach. I, I've never been a part of it where the cohesiveness on an ongoing daily basis is, is um, as fluid as it is here currently. Coach, you talked about the adjustments and being able to change when y'all went on that run in the first half, pulled the four run, there was a sideline out of bounds play and Wade was gonna throw it in. You switched him real quick, boots threw it in to get Wade the ball at the end. Yeah, it was pretty good. good. Uh, Is that an I was a, I was I was stuttering a little bit low. You'd have been mad at me because I had it in my brain and I was drawing it up and then I asked uh, Dev who was in and he told me and I go, no, we're gonna change it for, what do we call this one? And he was like, I don't know, what are you talking about? And I was like, you know what I'm talking about? I want the rap. And he goes, da 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 And so I was stuttering a little bit, but I thought it was it was the right play. It was good. It was good. Why do you think it is y'all were able to hold them uh, so well from the three-point line, second half, running that zone? I know the book would suggest that's one shot that should be there, but y'all seem to do a pretty good job. Uh, coming into tonight, they were making 4.9 threes per game. 
They were shooting 29% from three. So tonight they made five and shot 31%. Four did a really good job. Um, they put so much pressure on the rim. Um, we scored 40 points in the charge circle in Fayetteville when we played them. Um, they have the highest rim shot percentage in the SEC. They put so much pressure on the rim, and Zero is as good of a player as I've seen in a long time of getting downhill and at the right moment making a decision. And he makes those other guys so effective because they're, they're all migrating to the rim. And he had three threes in the first half, right? And um, one boot screwed up. We called that the high nail. He knew he messed up. But the, it's because there's so many cutters that we've, our group was over paranoid about cutters, and they were killing us on cuts in the first half. Um, and then I guess they made one in the second. So I think statistically, in essence, that's that's what they average. The uh, emotion the guys were showing there in the last minute, two minutes of the game seemed kind of like a like a, a season high, if you were to say. Do you, do you think that was from the grind that this game was? From what, what would you kind of attribute some of that emotion to? I think there's joy. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, um, it, it seems as though over the last few weeks, similar to what I mentioned to you, uh, I've never said it publicly until I mentioned it to you uh, yesterday. Uh, we, we've now played in 13 NCAA tournament games. We don't talk about it publicly, but uh, our guys understood that. Um, and no matter how tough you are and how narrow of a world you live in, emotionally, that takes a toll. And uh, we have great respect for Arkansas. I think they were picked preseason number two in the SEC. I think uh, against when we played Wofford, uh, we finished six and five after that loss. Arkansas was ranked tenth in the United States, so uh, that speaks to their staff. Uh, coach has won seventy four percent of his college games through eight years as a coach. Um, he's won more SEC games over the last four years than any team in the league. They have three NBA players currently on their team who will be in the NBA next year. They're really good. They're really good. They're going to advance in the NCAA tournament. But I, I, uh, I do think that there is uh, joy in a sincere way, in an humble way. I, I don't think our guys are, maybe they are to you guys, uh, I don't think that there's a hint of arrogance within what we're doing. I don't think you hear us saying things that make it about us, but I do think that they love one another and I think that they enjoy working together. And for sure, like um, playing in front of a crowd that continues to grow, continues, it's starting to be a hard ticket to get. Um, yeah, I think as a kid, you grow up wanting to be in that position, right? And. Um, the guys that pay attention to ball on our team, uh, they knew that Tennessee beat Alabama. Um, yeah, it was great joy, fun joy. And we'll, we'll just see if we're, if we can continue to stay disciplined to just coach cliche, go 1-0 at the next one. You're back up with the D. Speaking of, just yep. real quick, speaking of joy, you talked about the turnaround after, you know, Santa came to our house and did he the give you that, that shirt and tie combo? He, yeah, I got this from Scott Drew and Bailey. But I uh, know. Sure does they, look uh, like it. Was it Santa give you anything? Is, is that the secret? No, uh, I think we had three and a half days off, and the best gift that uh, I get ever is time to be with my family and uh, turn my phone off. I probably wasn't the best Santa Claus ever. Um, but, you know, it's rare that I get to just be with all four of my kids and my wife. And so that was my gift. And that was the best gift. Mm -hmm. That's a